Hey everybody, Andrew Ains with Golf Academy. As always, you're very welcome to the video. Thanks for tuning in and watching the review today. More G425 this week. This time it's the turn of the SFT driver. Let's tell you first of all what SFT stands for, straight flight technology. So take this scenario. You're a right-handed golfer. You hit your drives and the vast majority of your drives kind of start on target down this white line and then as the ball gets to the top of its flight that ball starts turning spinning off to the right yeah or you might start the ball left of this white line and then all of a sudden big banana comes in and we get this big left to right shape many many reasons we're not going to dip into too much why you hit those shots you might well have a swing which goes what we would call on the downswing we would say the club's traveling from out to in. So the club's swinging across the ball, cutting across it, putting side spin on it, which generally tends to make that ball spin to the right. There are things which can counteract this. It could be that your swing pass quite good. So you deliver the club on a pretty good pass to the ball, but just at that crucial moment of collision with the ball and the club face, your club face comes in a bit open. Again, it's going to produce side spin, which wants to make that ball go to the right for right-handed golfer. Now, golf manufacturers are quite clever. They know that a lot of golfers tend to fade or slice the ball. So that's where we had the draw bias driver come in from. And years ago, it was pretty pretty unsubtle. All they did was they just took the square club face and closed it about four degrees. That's where the early draw face drivers came in and they worked to an extent. Have a little look from overhead here at the SFT driver and what you'll see in the heel of the club is a weight. So this weight here is a 26 gram weight. Now more weight in the heel of the club helps the club face square up. So if you're trying to deliver the club to the ball and it's coming in a little bit open, that extra weight back in the heel will help try and square the club face up. And 26 grams is quite a big chunk of weight to help that happen. Now, if you're a drawer of the ball, you move the ball sort of right to left, or you hit it pretty straight, then you probably don't want to go for the SF Tech. But if you're a little bit of a fader stroke slicer, it can definitely help. Loads of stuff on the Ping website. If you want to dip into all the technology that's inside it, then feel free. I'm not going to talk about that today. I've got this in a 10.5 degree loft. I've got it in a regular shaft, which weighs around about sort of 50, 55 grams. Standard length, 45 and 3 quarter inches long. There is a debate that that might be too long for most golfers, but we'll go with it. I'm going to attempt to hit some uh, little fades, some cuts. Now, I'm a natural drawer of the ball, so I'm going to have to try and change the way I present this club to the ball. I'm going to slow the club speeds down a little bit because I want this to be relative to a lot of golfers out there who are maybe swinging their driver at 85 miles an hour, somewhere around about that. So we'll have a little play and see if this, if this club works. Let's get in and hit some. Got some Mizuno balls down on the deck. Where am I? I'm at Burkdale Golf Club, Royal Burkdale in Southport in England. Um, on the 10th hole. Uh, yeah, let's hit a couple. So first shot I'm going to try and hit for you is I'm going to try and get the swing path pretty good, but I'm going to leave the club face open. I'm going to see if this club deals with that club face being a little bit open. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Now we'll bring up the data on that. As you can see, that's, that's hit the fairway. It's done really well. It's run out there to 209 yards. Bring up the data for you. So what I've done on that shot fairly successfully is I have swung the club just bring up the other data actually It'd be a little bit better for us club data is good so my swing path there was so the, the direction the club's traveling swing path as we call it was 5.3 degrees out to in so swinging out to in the club face angle okay so the actual club face at the moment of impact to the path was 11 degrees open 
5.7 open to the target. Hope I'm not baffling you too much with numbers there. So with an out to in swing path and the club phase open to the path, that is going to produce side spin. It's going to make the ball want to spin to the right. But remember, we've got this big chunk of weight in the heel counteracting that. And it's actually done a really good job. I've only got 650 revs of side spin. Back spin's quite high. But all of that, club speed was 91 miles an hour. All of that has kept that ball under control, hasn't it? Yes, it started a little bit left because the swing path and the club face, whatever. But the ball's done really well. Very interesting stuff. I'm going to try and slow one down a little bit more for you. And I'm going to really try and swing this big time. I'm going to try and create a really big sort of slice and see again if it controls that. Right, so I have swung that big time out to in. Not sure what I did with the club face or the club speed, but it's, it's certainly not sliced, has it? Got the club speed down to 85 miles an hour. Swung that 12 degrees out to in, 12 and a half out to in, with the club face nearly nine degrees open to my path. I've hit it out the toe, 85 miles an hour, but it hasn't sliced which is um, quite remarkable, actually. You can see that the side spin there is very, very low. So the ball's just gone dead straight. Yeah, it missed the fairway, but it's still in play, isn't it? So this club really does work, folks. You know, if you're a fade or a slicer of the ball and you want to start hitting some more fairways, want to try. And Ping have said that this, compared to the G410, which they also did an SFT version in, which was excellent. This performs even better. This will help counteract more side spin. I'm going to go after this one a little bit. No idea what's going to happen. Remember, this is just a regular shaft, and I'm going to pound one here. It's the bunker. This. Oh, look at that. Perfect layup. Perfect layup. So let's have a look at that one. Sorry, this is still saying that it's a, it's a hybrid at the moment. That's not actually affecting the numbers at all. Um, it's just that I forgot to change it to a driver. So uh, just, just wording, that's all it is. So let's have a little look at this one in action. Got the shape. Got a hundred and nearly 107 miles an hour club head speed. I've got a 228 carry. Now what you'll notice here is that the backspin rate is very, very high. I'm up at 4,000. That's because of the shaft that's in here and the way that this club's weighted. I would be looking for more of a backspin rate if I'm custom fitting myself for more like 2,000, 2,500. And that's obviously losing me a whole load of distance. But I still managed to control the club face pretty well. Had to kind of work that a little bit. So, what do we think of the G425 SF Tech driver? Great bit of kit for the golfer who wants to draw the ball. I know I'll get a lot of guys coming in here, and girls, sorry, coming in saying, I want to learn how to draw the ball. I'm like, well, don't get too hooked into a draw, let's try and hit it straight first before we worry about the draw. But if you just got that little bit of a fade on the ball and you, you find a lot of balls running into the first cut on the right hand side, and you, you get a lot of golfers who are slicers just aiming more and more left. And the more you aim left, the more you swing across it and the worse it becomes. Anyway, that's another story. Definitely works, the SF Tech driver. Cost in this country is the retail price in the shops is going to be £399. Always go and get a fitting. Never try and buy a driver blind. You know, go and hit some shots with a qualified fitter on a launch monitor. Try some different shaft options. Try some setups, different lofts. Get everything the way you want it. Because if you're going to spend best part of £400, you want this driver to be absolutely bang on for you. Custom fit is the only way forward, folks. If you go and buy it blind off the internet, you're going to take a chance. Unless you know what your fitting is, then that's absolutely fine. Hey, thanks for watching the video today. Post your comments on golfers who've used previous Ping SF Tech models. 
If you're using the G410, would you change to this? Maybe, you'd have to baby gun, put one and test it up against the G410 and then the 425, see what it's doing. A great driver, really enjoyed hitting it. Thanks for watching the video, see you soon.